So in the studio right now, I got another celebrity. It's Nicholas Cage. Hi, Nicholas. <laughs> How's it going, Pickles? I'm really glad that you could be here. As as you could see, uh, I I just interviewed Jeff Goldblum <laughs> very quickly. He's a friend of mine. So <laughs> thank you for uh, for reconnecting us. It had been a while. So yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a pleasure. Um. So. I wanted to talk to you about some of the films that you've made in the 80s because those are some of my favorites. I don't acknowledge uh, half of those, so so pick pick wisely. Okay, um, I'll just name off some and you'll just say I'll say, no. I'll say green light or red light. Okay, uh, is green light good, red light bad? You'll see. Okay, um, so Vampire's Kiss. Screen light. It's it's okay. good. Okay. Yeah, no, I like. Yeah. That's one of my yeah. favorites. I cuss a lot in that film. I there's a, uh, it's it's ninety percent improv. That's uh, amazing. I, I studied with the uh, the uh, Groundlings. You know the Groundlings. Yes, I do know. Fourteen the Groundlings. months prior to the shooting, we uh, we uh, we got together and we worked. It was it was good stuff. That's awesome. Uh, where did you uh? Get the inspiration for your accent. Well, like, what? Uh, uh, that's that's actually uh, my real voice. If uh, if you watch like Peggy Sue got married, that's that's another film where I'm using my real voice. Yeah. Do you? Uh, is that a green light film too? Peggy Sue got married. It's um, it's a yellow light actually. Uh, I I hate to. It's it's good. It's good. I I like it. But uh, if if you go back and see, it's uh, Jim Carrey. And me and Jim, I, you know, it's some rough waters, I'll say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, en- I enjoyed you uh, in that film very much, and I enjoyed you in the musical group in that film. You did a wonderful <laughs> job transcending. And I, was, uh, I was actually just talking about this last night. Uh, good segue. Um, no, uh... Uh, I, I I forget what we were called, but I want to say want to say the Leatherman. Um, uh, we were uh, doo wop before the industry let black people record music. So you know, it's uh, nineteen fifty four through fifty seven. You know, uh, it was all just white doo wop groups and white basketball players. And then uh, they uh, they just let just let uh, African Americans come in and. And do their kind of music. I, I guess you call it rock and roll. I never cared for it, uh, or uh, you know, basketball. So interesting. You really did your your research there, Nick. Um, Thank you. Anyway, uh, I hope that didn't come off as. No, you're you're fine. <laughs> you're right. you're okay. Don't uh, want to don't want to be smirched with a good name. No. Cage. Yes. Yes. You're doing extremely well um thank you so another film that i loved was wild at heart i'm gonna stop you right there that's it's a red light okay (laughs) i didn't want to okay you know it's 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 all right it's i knew you know i i said some of these films were gonna be red lights that's a red light and it goes back a second because we were just talking about how I don't like rock and roll. It's in that character, David Lynch, he's like, this character's rock and roll. And I was like, whoa, no, I don't like rock and roll. But Defoe, he came in and he was like, calm down, Nick. And I was like, all right, just it's it's a paycheck. You know, I. I do a lot of these films for just just a paycheck, and uh, any any film I do with rock and roll in the soundtrack, or if it's got rock or roll in the title, like the like for instance, The Rock. I don't like that film because it's got that that title to it. It was just uh, I I told them call it Alcatraz. And I said, let's, you know, just call it Alcatraz. They'll know. But they said, no, no, Cage is the rock. And I said, no, I don't go for that. So 
it's it's uh they they didn't actually film my parts at uh, at Alcatraz. I, my my parts were on a set. Sean Connery though, completely one one hundred percent on on Alcatraz Island. So it's it's a lot of movie magic. I don't know if you know that. It's wonderful. Um, okay, let's go back to red light, green light. So let's, I. Yeah, I don't upset you. I'm sorry. It's okay. You push the cage, and the cage flies free. Free. Okay. okay. Um, cage free. That's a that's a brand of eggs. I'm just gonna name off more and just yeah. red light, green light, sometimes yeah, yellow it's, light. It's, it's um, fast times at Ridgemont High. I will say yellow because my scene involved no rock and roll. Uh, I took my, you know, sh- no shirt, no shoes, no dice. Uh, but if they had said on the front of the thing, rock and roll, I also would have said no dice. What about uh, adaptation? Uh, green light, green light. Okay. Charlie and Kaufman. Yes. Great guy. Yeah. Yes. I, that's actually my favorite film. Oh, thank you. Um, I, how was it like working with Meryl Streep? <laughs> you know, um, I only got to work with her half the time because my, my twin brother, he got more of the scenes with her. I, I played the Nicolas Cage that played one Kaufman brother and... Myself and Amir played the other Kaufman brother. That's that's actually I didn't know that. Uh, that's really. Can you explain that more? This is very serious acting uh, technique. You know, I, I don't want to go into it too much because that is the magic of movies. But um, basically, it's it's like three D technology, and there's two cameras, and one camera captures the real me and one cam- camera captures the me in the mirror and so if you had done that movie in 3D and you you know when you like close one eye and it's either red or blue you only want to see one cage at a time it's movie magic that is that is movie magic it's magical um red light or green light the wicker man oh, that's that's my my biggest green light I've ever I've ever lit. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really famous famous scenes in that, and you know it's it gets better the more I film those scenes. Um, or you know what I I guess I I should explain. Um, I don't like to make um recordings too many recordings of my my film so when you actually watch um what you think is a dvd that's i i get i get a call and i've got to fly out to that island and and record those scenes live that's amazing thank you so but you know sometimes it's just it's just the mirror me so yeah green light do you do you want me to con air I'm going to say red light. Just just because my hair is a little rock and roll in it. And hey. uh you know, um and the and the jailhouse, you know, it's kind of like Elvis. And now, I heard a rumor that you're a big Elvis fan. What do you say about this? That's uh that's actually mirror me. Oh, mirror you is into Elvis. Yes, um, he's uh, he's completely different than myself. That's that's why Charlie Kaufman approached us to do adaptation. He's like, you guys are, are polar opposites. He's he's rock and roll, and you're a little bit country. And uh, <laughs> is that is that why adaptation is such a great film? Because it's it's two sides. I I think so. Yeah, it's uh, you know, um, you don't get an Oscar nomination for 
for just anything. It, t- it takes two performances to bring the cage to the Kodak Theater. Okay, I'm going to name two more films that are extremely great, in my opinion, but again. You're allowed three. Okay, okay. Um, Leaving Las Vegas. It's green light. Okay. Anytime the cage goes to the Oscars, it's it's a green light. Okay, yes, that was. I'm a big fan of Billy Crystal. That was very Oscar worthy. Very Oscar worthy. Thank you. It's it's really hard acting, uh, drinking all day, and making, like having uh, Elizabeth Shue rubber boobs in your face. It's it takes it takes a part out of you. Yes, I uh, I I believe I I was kind of shocked because Elizabeth Shue was in Back to the Future, and I used to watch that when I was little and. That's true. It's very weird for me when I first saw that when I became an adult. Um, yeah, I know. You, what's, your, uh, what's your favorite Back to the Future? Um, one, because that's the only one with Crispin Glover in it. Uh, he's not in the... He's not, he's in, the not in the two or three. The, they had I think a he's stand in two in the, in the dance scene. Oh yeah, that that was that was footage taken from the first film. Wait, was that was that Mir Crispin Glover? Yes, that was. And I've only met the real Crispin Glover. Well, so. actually, Mir Crispin Glover. Uh, Crispin has talked about this before. Um, I've never met him, but apparently he has a friend that looks a lot like him and goes on sets, kind of messes with him. His name's Ruben Farr. So I'm assuming he's very upset because Ruben did this, but Crispin isn't in, is only in the first. I believe Ruben Farr had something to do with the second, and then the third. They're just done with uh, both of them, apparently. I would have liked to seen Cowboy Crispin Glover. Oh yeah, that would have been amazing. He would have been like this drunk, hanging out at a bar, uh, I guess cafe 1880s, uh, for. Yeah. Okay. It's it's good. You got it. Um, um But uh yeah, you know, like maybe he just is like sweeping up in the corner or something. You know, he's like and they look to him once and he's like, well, I guess I'm not in this. Yeah, I believe that's exactly how it went down. On another film, Red Light or Green Light, really? um Valley Girl. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> It's red lights! Red lights! Red lights! I specifically said not to go to a cafe or bar where they play rock and roll. I'm a valley boy. You can tell my by accents. And instead they they took us to this bar and they they're playing this awful music, just guitars. Red light. Well, that was poignantly made. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so if you so since uh, you don't like rock and roll, what kind of music do you, does Nicolas Cage like? I'm um. Uh... I'm a big fan of the Four Tops. Um, again, that that pre fifty six white only music. Um, I guess uh, your your classics, your Beethoven. Um, I, I'm a bigger fan of uh, of uh, the Beethoven and Bill and Ted's. Um, he was my favorite. Um, I know, I know what you're going to say. He plugs in his violin or whatever and plays some rock and roll. Oh, it's piano in the mall. But all, I, I, I forgive him for, that he was, was not, he was out of his element. That wasn't really Beethoven. So I think you're fine on that. I believe that was mirror Beethoven. Was it? Yeah, so you know that the mirror, that, the that's, mirrors. <laughs> you know, should have known. 
were were all the other um, people in the in the time machine mirrors? Yes, they were. So was that mirror Jane Weedman? Um, no, that was mirror Joan of Arc. Actually, they look a lot alike. They look a lot alike, <laughs> is from what I hear. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. So, or, uh, are you said you were a little bit country, and yet I oh, didn't yeah. hear any. Um, the old country, uh, Vienna, <laughs> and uh, parts of Italy. It's very. That's a very beautiful region. It is. Thank you. I own most of it now. I've got four castles over there. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, no. It's great there. And one's uh, one this 1776 or non-American year castle. We transformed it to an aquarium. It's just full of octopus now. It's great. Filled with octopus? Like filled. Filled. What? Well, there's... There's... 14 rooms and 30 octopi. So 30. Uh, that's that's a good uh, that's a good amount of octopus. That's crazy. That is just an insane amount of octopus. That's <laughs> awesome. Is it octopus or is it octopi? I feel like you would know. The dish is octopi. The animal is octopus. Okay. And octopi is baked, correct? Yes. It's okay. It's octopi. Yeah. Baked in the sun. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, um, it's been great talking to you. It has been fantastic. I, except for those red lights. I will make a note of it, and it, I will never talk about those again. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. They don't it. exist to me anymore. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. Okay. I'm going to play the four tops for you. Thank you. As an, a, a token you, of apology for the red lights, uh, I'm going to play Baby, I Need Your Lovin' by the Four Tops. Thanks, Pickles. It's, You're welcome. It's been fun. It's been, it's been real. It has been real. You're listening to KCPR San Luis Obispo, 91.3 FM, and this is the Four Tops for Nicolas Cage.
Hey, Chris, I'm really glad that you came in. Yeah, no, this, it's been a celebrity cavalcade outside. It's, uh, it's really cool. I'm really glad that you're here. I invited you because, you know, you're a movie dude, and I was having a bunch of, like, celebrities in. Yeah, no. Uh, did you meet Did you meet Jeff Goldblum? No, no. You, um, he was gone by the time you came. But I felt his presence. So, you know, like, it's kind of like, uh, it's he was pleasant. like walking past Abercrombie and Finch. Oh. Like, you don't need to go inside, but you get that stench. Um, like, but Goldblum's, like, it's it's like roses. He was very pleasant. He was very uh, funny and over the top and charismatic, but he was enjoyable. Did you meet Nicolas Cage, though? I wrestled Nicolas Cage. Uh, it was great. We were walking. We were passed by each other. And um, did he bear hug you? He bear hugged me a little, and I wasn't sure what he was doing. And I kind of like, huh, huh. And then it just got into a weird wrestling match. Shirts came off. He's uh, really. And it was. It was like it was my birthday. He's really. <laughs> intense to interview intensity intensity i i really felt nervous the entire time i thought he was gonna kill me the entire time he might have daggers for eyes like in roger rabbit well he he like was wrestling at the glasses on the entire time yeah no he he doesn't take them off ever um he he makes these like fast movements and he like lunges towards you when he's talking like he oh really God. wants you to like know what he's talking about and you 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 like, you back away, but the more you back away, it, like, makes him angrier. Mm. And if you just stand up to him, you just, like, you smell, like, liquor on his breath. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got, I got that. Um, and it was terrifying. You know, he's, it's kind of like when they warn you, like, if you see a bear in the forest, what do you do? That's what I was thinking of. All those rules are, like, out. You just, like, throw that handbook out and you're like, well, you know what? I'm just going to play by ear and see how this goes. I could have a best friend by the end of the day. I can have a mortal enemy. But either way, I'm going to remember that. It was so scary, like, interviewing him because he's just, like, on it. Like, I I kept making him mad, and I didn't even know it. So you just have to be, like, really calm and don't make sudden movements, and you don't really make eye contact with him. You stare over his head. Yes, yeah. No, um, I did notice uh, when I came into the studio a couple of pee puddles. So <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. Was either, that. that was either him marking his territory or... <laughs> Just the sheer afraidness. No, that was him because that was not me. I didn't know that. <laughs> if I mean, if it's on that side, then that was him. It's a musky odor. I'll, I'll give it that. He eats a lot of asparagus, I bet. Yeah, it's, yeah. He, yeah, he, uh, one thing that I thought was interesting when I interviewed him, just, I hope he's not listening. Oh, my God. I don't think he is. Uh, he doesn't listen to the radio. He's, he told me he was pleased to be on the radio but he's not friends with the radio i didn't know what that mean, meant but he said i don't personally i think affiliate. he believes that video killed the radio star and he thinks that radio died that day like it just doesn't exist he thinks we're just talking to like space well he said i'm really pleased to do this interview he said although i respect radio did you see I the radio that he brought with him no it was just a box full of tissues <laughs> He said he doesn't affiliate with radio. He's like he he. I don't I, I don't know what it meant. It was like I don't affiliate with radio, but I respect the radio. Like it doesn't make any sense. And then he was just like saying like like it's Wait, no was, offense to you. It's just that was he the talking radio about, like the radio radio, or was he talking about that movie with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. I don't know. I really don't know. But he seemed like afraid and like like. You know, he did it out of the kindness of his heart, mm. but he doesn't really like... Very it, generous. Yeah, he doesn't like the radio or is afraid of it. Or I don't know. But anyway, he I'm, I don't think he's listening, but I noticed that when when I was interviewing him, he's just like spatting out like how angry he is about all these mu movies. He doesn't like rock and roll and there's not like a he real like him. I don't know. He said there's not a real him. There's like a mirror him that likes what? rock and roll. And like, no, he's a crazy, is really crazy. And I was like really <laughs> uncomfortable. And then another thing that he, oh, he said like all this like kind of racist stuff. But I can't say, I can't Wait. stop him or say anything or, or do anything. Cause it's like, if you bring it up, he, he would have just like maybe like said more stuff or he would have gotten mad um, or that's... something. But I just, I just was like, okay, it's fine. I just need to get him yeah. out of here. Yeah, just I, I saw you like banging sticks together and like banging a trash can, like kind of scaring him. 
That uh, that does scare him. And and he he kind of got rattled and he left. So. Well, I said, okay, the interview's over, and he he did. He's like, okay, cool. And he was like, I thought he was gonna leave because the interview's over, but he still like was hanging around, like he was waiting. He was like, yeah, like, like he he wanted to hang out, or maybe he was waiting to get paid. I don't know. He did say something about a paycheck, like I told him we're a community I, radio, we don't get paycheck. paid. I told him like we don't have money. Like this is a nonprofit organization. We don't. Have- well, he, I mean, he doesn't even know what this is. Like. He's he's just like assumes that if he goes somewhere, like if he goes out of the house, like someone gives him a paycheck. I'm just surprised he found his way here because KCPR is kind of hard to find. And I told him where it was, and I thought like, oh, he's gonna like be at like the bookstore yelling at people. You may like. Did you do kind of the the fishing line and the dollar bill? No, then... I didn't. I don't okay. even have a dollar to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, you need a dollar to do that. You need like and a fishing a, line, a million dollar like check to just don't have that. No, um, well, it doesn't like it doesn't have to be real. It could just be like a crayon and say million dollars. <laughs> I will take that into account next time. That's um, how I'm going to pay Nicolas Cage. So the thing that like freaked me out was like, so he said like he only likes white people music what? and i was what like the? or something like that i don't like i mean it was no. something along the lines of like like i don't know he's <laughs> like black people like start making their music and that's fine and he was trying to sound like not racist but it was like because he was even saying it was kind of racist <laughs> it was like but i don't think he knows i think he just is like not there but see he said this is a weird thing. So he said, like, yeah, I like white people music, like the Four Tops. And the Four Tops are Motown. Like, yeah. they're, they're like, a pinnacle of, like, classic, <sighs> empowering black music. And Maybe he meant, like, a box of toys. And he's like, I had Four Tops, and they were all white. And the music was sweet music. I don't know. But I really do like the Four Tops. And I was just, like, yeah, looking no, they're great. at. Like, you can't correct him. You can't be, like, actually, like. African American culture and music is like copied God, by like white culture a lot. Like look at rap and hip hop and like funk and like soul and like every 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 music that's good is like start started by black people. What did I I mean, like white people start polka and it's like the only thing you can show that's good is like Weird Al. <laughs> yeah, I I mean like with polka though it's. It wasn't really like invented by what I think it just kind of happened. Like it, was a, it, it came it out of the woods out. one day. It's it's like a German folklore. <laughs> like, oh, don't trust that witch. She invented polka. <laughs> I really hope. I really wish. That... I'm pretty sure that's no. Okay. Yeah, no, that that actually happened. Uh, <laughs> so I thought that was weird because he said like he hates rock and roll, but he likes all this other music that's him... like influenced by rock and roll. And then he says like white people started, but th- white people didn't start. And it's just like I've seen him in like a lot of movies where he's like like talking about Elvis and like he he likes rock and roll. I'm yeah, I'm no, sure I, well, no, he said that was mirror him that it wasn't him. I don't know. I don't understand, but I'm, I guess so, uh, I was like really uncomfortable. I was just like, oh, why are you talking about this Nicolas Cage? Like, yeah, no, that's that's really weird. Did you see him on SNL like way back in the day? No, it's great. Like, there's a skit where he um, him and like his friends are like Elvis's posse. Um, but like Elvis is like a tiny Rob Schneider. I think they call it like pocket. Oh, Elvis. tiny Elvis. I yeah. totally remember that. He's like, Hey man, this stereo is really big. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. No, it's, it's great. Um, and like the other thing I really remember about that episode was, um, him, like there was a skit where him and his wife were like having a baby and they're like, what are we going to call it? And they're like, we can call it Pete. And he's like, oh, are you kidding? They're going to call him Peter, small Peter. Oh, I remember that. And then, like, at the end, his name rhymes with, like, something really offensive. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I remember that episode. Yeah. No, it was really it was really weird having him on. I'm going to... I'm going to... You should lock your doors. No, I am. And I'm going to put this recording... Citizens of St. Louis Obispo, lock your doors. Nicolas Cage could be on the loose. I really want to put this on YouTube, but I'm really afraid he'll find it and he'll, like, find me and attack me or he'll like or other people will just like be like super super angry about like you know him talking about but the because you're talk. fearless 
I know, but I'm afraid of Nicolas Cage after interviewing him. <laughs> he... I'm not, I'll have Jeff Goldblum to come back. He'll kick his ass. He, he, I believe in him. That, that'd be a good wrestling match to see. I believe in Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds like a campaign. Like, I believe. I believe C- in Jeff Goldblum. Citizens of Gotham City. I believe in Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> That's actually going to be be the new premise for the Batman movie. Tim Burton is bringing it back, and Ooh. Jeff Goldblum is. What would okay? Yeah, what would it? Jeff is, Goldblum is, is Batman. Maybe like, like nineteen eighty eight Goldblum, because like when he was in shape and stuff like that. But now I think now he would be like, what villain would he be? Uh, I you know maybe a good Mister Freeze. No, it can't be. Du- it has to be like a villain that hasn't been used. Oh, that's like Eggman. Good- yeah, that's a good one. Or, or the or calendar. Oh, There's uh, a calendar. yeah, calendar or bookworm. Oh yeah. Yeah, he'd be he'd be a good like bookman. Oh yeah. Or bookworm. Yeah. Bookman. Bookman. <laughs> bookman. That's like a library superhero. <laughs> you like, would see read more books. No, thanks, it, it- bookman. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like. Your elementary school readathon, Bookman saves the day. Um, okay, I was, uh, you know, like how they have like terrible like promotional posters in the library, like they just don't get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw some ones in the San Luis Obispo Library that were like of the stars of Twilight reading a like reading books, and like it's Taylor Lautner like reading a book, and he's like kind of laughing because he's like probably to him he's like, huh, these silly things, like looking at words, and he doesn't understand them. I saw one that said volunteer at your local library and the premise of the poster was I don't have anything better to do. <laughs> that sounds like something that they print like it been World War Two, like <laughs> volunteer at your local library, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Buy <laughs> wool bonds. Oh god, except I feel like they would have something better to do, like Oh, but like it all be like there there mysteriously wouldn't be like sections like in the travel section about going to Germany or like oh Italy. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, actually, there would be no, the only travel section would be, you can go to Britain, Canada, or Australia. <laughs> yeah. Like, visit the Axis nations. Yeah. Allied nations. Allied nations. Whoops. Whoops it easy. So it's like nothing about any other country. You're just like, huh. It was like, it, it, unless it was talking about history, it's like Spain was this country. And like, you're like, what? Maps it's still around. Maps at that time must have been like, like Swiss cheese. Just like, where's Russia? What? No, doesn't exist. Yeah, there's no USSR. Nobody rivals the U.S. Yeah, no. It uh, who who dares use U.S. in their name of their country? Only us. <laughs> So, it's quite goofy. You know what's funny? <laughs> Usually Greg is here and he's uh he's Polish and oh. he uh he he speaks Polish and Russian and he lived in Russia for a long time and his show is all about like kind of the USSR country's pop music. So if he was here, he would just be like furiously angry. But he's already angry at me cuz I called him a princess last night. What what which princess? I just said I, I said to Matt say hi to Wait, the Wait, was it like Han Solo like listen princess? It was kind of <laughs> like that. It was like I was like tell the princess I said hi and then I also said that if his outside mirrored his inside he'd be a fat girl wearing a tiara. Oh, that's very honey boo boo. Yeah. Well, he's like I love Burger King and <laughs> you didn't go to Taco Bell without me. And he he was been watching a lot of Disney films recently, so I kind of uh, think like. So, that okay. I just came up with this, but so Burger King has like the king, obviously. Should Taco Bell have like Presidente? Yeah, sure. Like that. Like now that they don't use the Chihuahua anymore, they yeah they'd be like that that works. Like the Presidente. Well, there's still the bell. There is still the bell, but like the bell doesn't say anything. Like the bell, the bell isn't like a call to arms. Like it doesn't have a crack in it. It's like we remember the Taco Bell. No, it should. That should be their next campaign. El Presidente is going to talk about the the Taco Bell. You know. Okay, so I watched a, um, I watched Oblivion last night, and like it's stupid. Um, (laughs) But they go. There's like this one part where they're underground, and they have like you know, artwork and stuff like that, like the things they've saved from before the war. And, uh, you know, there's some paintings and they like had a bell on the back 
And I was like, oh, maybe that's the Liberty Bell. But you know what? Now that it, now that we say it, it's probably like a Taco Bell. And they're like, <laughs> we must remember our past. I heard M83 did the soundtrack to that film. The soundtrack actually was pretty good. Like uh, um, Mondo, um, like the people associated with uh, the Alamo Draft House, they came out like they did like this really nice like album um, for Oblivion. And that was kind of like weird because it was like, eh. They usually pick good films, but like it was okay. It was pretty and it was like fun to listen to, but like not the dialogue. Like a lot of the dialogue would just be one lines and um, it'd be like, you know, stop or like, no, Jack. It Like that would be like uh, Zoe Bell. Uh, oh, from, she like, was in that. She's in it, but she has no lines. She honestly, not a line. And, um, uh, one of the guys from Lost, um, like the guy, oh, Sawyer. Sawyer from Lost was it? Like he had four, four lines. What and, is, uh, is, it just a, is it just looking like, look at this, everything's dead? No, it, um, it, like if there was never like sci-fi films for the last 10 years or 20 years, it would have been great. But like it took all these elements from really good sci-fi like there's so much stuff from moon and there's so much stuff from like wally and there's stuff from like uh planet of the apes and 2001 space odyssey it's just like you watch it and you're like oh or like the matrix there's stuff blatantly ripped off from the matrix and like all these other movies and you're like ah all right you know like i and like so many times i i thought the film would just end like that was the big that was the big reveal and and then like you'll end pretty soon because like it was over two hours long, and but like they were so thorough with it that they did the whole entire story. Like we've got to explain every tiny little thing that it went on in it. It was <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah, it didn't look that good. Yeah, I, it, it was fun. It was like they wanted to be like Cloverfield, that kind of movie. Um, it wants to be like kind of post-apocalyptic and kind of not so much rely on lines but the moments i would say cloverfield is like one of the only sci-fi films it doesn't steal from (laughs) like it's more like from i am legend oh okay um yeah and but you know i I had some laughs it was was funny (laughs) it wasn't like not purposely (laughs) funny but i was just like you know, stupid I lines. Love, no, I really like the those kinds of films. They are uh, they're funny for the, all the wrong reasons. Those yeah. are those are some of the more funnier films. They're not trying. They're just funny because they're bad. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I've been wanting to do this thing with the Palm for a while, and like where we have like like kind of a mystery science theater thing, and we'd show like a bad movie like of that caliber, and they'd just like have microphones and we just make fun of it all the way through. And I think that would be way more enjoyable than actually like going to see oblivion. Like if there were three comedians or just like you and me, like with microphones, that'd be so much better. That's awesome. Yeah. I I think that, I mean, have you got any luck to do that? Um, I've talked to Jim about it and he's a little on the fence just because lately he's had a hard time, like getting like younger people to go to the palm and like there's been and it's a shame because like there's so many good movies uh like we saw Trance the new Danny Boyle movie we saw um a place beyond the pines um with Ryan Gosling someone okay this girl in the front row left after the Ryan Gosling part she's like oh he's not in the like it's three stories so like he's not in the other two i don't want to spoil it but like um she just left after like the Ryan Gosling part i don't know if she went out and she's like yeah that's pretty much what she's i she's like there's no more gosling can I get like two thirds of my money back? Yeah. That was her actually, vo- no. actually voice. Okay, did you hear about the the Ryan Gosling sighting in slow that wasn't real? Uh yeah, I was working uh, Denim Black Horse that night, and we we got it, and like, cause it was a it was a couple people from like uh, I think uh, Firestone. It was a couple people from Firestone, and they're like, "Hey, let's do this thing," and like we'll just say, "Hey, I saw Ryan Gosling." And there was like I, I saw like a video later of like this group of like fifteen girls just like scourging like San Luis Obispo like looking for 
Ryan Gosling. I was and one of them. Were I w- you? I went and got, remember, Matt, I got into a dress and I was like, you take me downtown so I <laughs> could find him. Do you own dresses? Yeah, a lot of people seem to be very surprised when I say that. But uh, I wore a dress to my interview to be general manager, which I lost. But um, I wore, I probably freaked him out. They were like, oh, God. And I remember. Uh, Did the dress say like the same dress? Did the dress say like uh, Mrs. Gosling on it? No. And it was also not a dress made out of a trash bag or bubble wrap or any of that normal stuff that I wear. It was uh, it was a normal dress. And. I remember the best line of the day was my friend Alex, who's here at the station. He's DJ Raw Dog. He said, you wearing a dress is like me wearing a dress. Mm, And I was like, yeah, a lot of people are extremely surprised. Like you in a dress. What? It's I mean, I've worn dresses before and it's probably like in the same. I probably feel more comfortable than you feel comfortable in a dress. I think that you in a dress would look more like unsurprising than me in a dress i have some nice hips yeah and i just feel like unhappy and like meh like i don't want to wear this <laughs> was that cold. a farm animal noise <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's yeah no i i feel like uh have you seen those youtube videos of screaming goats uh, go, ah! no that's that's what i feel like that's the noise that i make meh <laughs> You should go on YouTube like that, like just uh, like a video of you copying catting them. No, it's really funny. I'll show it to you. And if you haven't seen it, just Google screaming goats. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, do you watch Nathan for you? No. It's really funny. Um, uh, he's one of the guys who also was on uh, H. John Benjamin has a van. Um, but he had an episode where he created a viral video and they did this huge like setup just to like fake it. And it was, uh, it actually like got the attention of like Good Morning America and all these like different shows. Like, hey, we got to show you this crazy video. And it was the video of like, um, I think a baby pig saving a baby goat in a pond. And it had like over a million views, but they like faked the whole thing and they, they showed you how and stuff like that. Like, it had to be like way like elaborate. Like, they had a cast of like, or a background of like, 30 people on hand just to like do this viral video but yeah watch nathan for you it's it's hilarious that's awesome i'm plugging like all sorts of crazy stuff yeah i know i can i can tell everybody is like at home with a notebook so yeah. i wanted to know uh about your movie oh yeah because that's yeah. the whole reason why you're here <laughs> i know yeah um yeah no uh, i'm making a movie it's called incognita and um it's a short film but it's like gonna be half an hour to 40 minutes long and uh, that might be a little long for a short, so I might do two versions of it. But um, it's uh, about these four girls who dress up as guys in order to get away with robbery. And we're going to shoot it like uh, in the middle of May uh, through the end of May. But it's I think it's going to be awesome. Um, we've got uh, we're in the middle of our um, fundraising campaign right now. Uh, so we've got like a big presence on Indiegogo, uh, Facebook tumblr and twitter i'm like designing new posters and stuff like that for it every day um like we made these like fake hundred dollar bills that i'm gonna like stick around places but like all the little information is actually just information about my movie um and we did a we did a new video this week for it that's really good like it shows me in the back of a car and i like talk about it for a minute and then like I, I show that I'm holding a gun and I'm like, now if you'll excuse me and I cock it and then I'm like, I've got to go do some fundraising of my own. You should check it out. It's, it's really, I think it's really good. And then, um, I actually, uh, got some celebrity talent, uh, for an earlier video. I, the people that were here, um, on, uh, Jeff on your Nick. show. Yeah. I had Jeff Goldblum and, uh, Nicholas Cage, um, record a little something for my movie. It was actually then like turning down, like being in it, but they didn't know I was recording them. So like I, I was able to kind of sneak that out and uh, I should piece together like people saying like little things so that I put it all together in like one of those YouTube videos of like, you know, Patrick Stewart sings, uh, I believe in love. Um, but it's just like him saying like, hello, how, Hey, you, 
I believe in love. You know, like I could just have like <laughs> like the celebrities from movies talk about my movie. But yeah, you should um yeah, we're gonna do a barbecue fundraiser. Um and we're gonna do a live auction, like just trying to raise money for it. We've raised um about two thousand dollars already. And we're trying to get to six. Um, but like we've got like movie posters and um stickers and there's gonna be a lot of cool art and stuff like that but that's awesome yeah in incognita incognita like the feminine version of the yes. word incognito so uh my next question is am i in this film you can be um we're gonna shoot a scene um at uh, mccarthy's uh and that's like gonna be this um so there's uh three robberies in the movie and like the first two are like just normal video and like the third robbery takes place at McCarthy's and it's going to be done like stills. Like we're going to just like um, go in there and just instead of like shooting with a like video camera, we'll just shoot like stills kind of not like kind of a mix of Ellen Von Unworth and the beginning of how I met your mother. Just like heavy saturated like flash images and it'll like be this cool montage but and we'll just play music to it. But yeah, so if you so want to, I could be a. Person. You could be yeah. Um, we we talked about having like a broken bottle smashed over someone's head, so maybe. Okay, I can do that. You can do that. Yeah. Um. Am I the person getting smashed on or the smasher? You're the smashed. The smashy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can do that. My I've tried to do that with real bottles, but I'm assuming it'll be fake. <laughs> We'll see what we can afford. Okay. Uh, <laughs> those those fake bottles are actually way expensive. So we'll just, you know, maybe we'll smash a real bottle and then glue it back together. And then... We'll figure it out. I'm um, sure that wouldn't cut you too badly. Oh, yeah, no. And if it does, just, re- like, get it on film and put it online as a blooper. And just get me bleeding out. I really want that. I, you know, I want to do, like, all these cool, fun things with it. Like, um, I'm a huge fan of Cannonball Run. And the bloopers that they have at the end of that is, like, so stupid. Like, it's obviously just, like, most of these guys were drunk on set. And uh, so it just shows them, like, flubbing lines. And um, they kind of did, like, a nod to that in uh, Anchorman. Like, they show, like, one of those. Or I think um, think the whole thing is, like, just uh, circulated around Burt Reynolds. Because they did the same thing for uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Where he's like, I'm making a movie. I want a blooper reel. Like... We'll we'll pay you more, but just no blooper. He was like, I don't need a paycheck. Just give me the blooper reel at the end of the movie. That's all I care about. That's and awesome. A, and a fancy comb for my mustache. Oh my god, that's so funny. But um, but yeah, it's it's. I'm really excited about it. Like I've shot like some other small videos, and um, I shot a music video for Red Eye Junction. And uh, yeah, like, I'm, a friends bit with, of, I'm friends with Reed, and I know your official photographer for Magazine Dirty. So yeah, that's, that's the time because he's in that band too. Yeah, did you see um, those photos I took of the Jello show? Uh, no, I haven't. You got to check not them on out. Facebook. Well, you can go on Facebook and go like, like be a stalker. Okay. On oh yeah, no, I already do that. <laughs> I do that all the time. But yeah, no, um, I've started shooting a lot more bands uh, lately. Thanks to those guys. And actually, um, I got this cool hookup for music for one uh, for the movie because um, I shot this show they did at the Z Club, and they played with this band called Glitter Dicks. Oh, I know that one. And I contacted Glitter Dicks about, um, hey, I'll just give you all, this, uh, all these photos, and in return, you can, uh, can you let me use one of your songs? And they're like, that's great. Yeah, sure. So, like, those little cool things, I've been able to kind of finagle my way. Cool. Well, uh, I think Alex is going to go on. Right, Alex? Yeah, he, he's like, <laughs> He whatever. seems really enthusiastic about it. <laughs> no, I, I text him. I'm like, come inside the studio now. But I'm going to finish with, uh, this is a song that I think you'll like really uh, great, greatly. This is uh, the greatest song ever. Uh, it's What's Inside a Girl by the Cramps. Your nice. Band. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. If that. I could get the cramps in, like, the remaining cramps, but if I could get, like, the cramps on the soundtrack, I'd... 
That's that's what I would. But love. which lineup would it be? Like Kid Congo. Um, you know, I am. Um, I mean, definitely Poison Ivy because she's always been around. Yeah, but... she's always the. Um, but uh, was was the one in the nineties? Like after Kid Congo, like Nick. Um, Nick Cave. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. even better. You know what? Nick Cave kind of looks like Lux Interior, so. He's the new singer for the Cramps. Oh my God, that's that's <laughs> the best. Yeah, I want that to happen more than anything in the Let's world. Let's make it happen. We okay. can do it. Right. Okay, so this is what's inside a girl by the Cramps. Thank <laughs> you for being on my show. Thank you, Pickles, for having me. Yeah, I'll have you on again. Cool. And I'll definitely uh, do this anytime. Okay, that'd be great. You're listening to KCPR San Luis Obispo, ninety-one point three FM.